Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar presentation. Today's webinar session is very exciting as we're kicking off our 2023 webinar series. We currently have seven webinars scheduled and we are in the process of adding additional webinars on a wide variety of digital dentistry and clinical topics. All the webinars will be presented free and one CE credit will be awarded. All information regarding upcoming webinars can be seen at blueskybio.university forward slash webinars. We have a powerful lineup of incredible speakers, including today's speaker, Dr. Scott Kness, and other speakers such as Dr. Russell Schaefer, Dr. Robert Mickley, Dr. Baron Grether, Dr. Corey Glenn, Dr. Rick Ferguson, Dr. Scott Gans, and many others. If you'd like to request a speaker or a topic, please reach out and let us know. This webinar series is scheduled mostly on Tuesdays during lunchtime on the East Coast or dinner time in many international countries. So if you're able to block out the time, get your sandwich or salad ready and join us for the educational sessions during your lunch break or whatever time it falls out in your location. If you have any questions during the webinar series, please enter them into the QA box on your screen and we will try to address them during the webinar presentations. The webinars are being recorded and will be available via YouTube, our social channels, and websites in a few days. So if you have someone who's not able to attend, you can share it with them. Since our last webinar series, Blue Sky Bio has made improvements to almost all Blue Sky Plan modules and all digital products. We are in the process of releasing a new version of Blue Sky Plan that will be available shortly on our website, packed with new features, AI-driven automation, and much more. We have also introduced new digital products in addition to our previously existing BioBigBox, LabPronto, and BlueSkyMate. We have added AI-driven 2D smile simulation, BlueSkyBio.University, where we are concentrating all relevant educational information, the vast majority being free. And of course, the topic of today's webinar presentation, BlueSky monitoring for remote monitoring of aligner patients. Information regarding all of our digital products can be seen at blueskybio.digital. Today's topic is remote patient monitoring as a clinical tool. Today's speaker is Dr. Scott Kenness, who is a superstar with digital dentistry and has been using Blue Sky monitoring functionality from the time it was a clunky tool to just request and get a single scan as part of biobigbox.com. Blue Sky monitoring today is, of course, a robust remote monitoring solution with automated scheduled scans, aligner change reminders, prompts and notifications for the clinician and patient, built-in 3D viewer, side-by-side -side comparison between the model from the treatment plan and the scan from the patient, and much more. But now I'll hand off the presentation to Dr. Scott Kness to explain and present how he uses Blue Sky Monitoring as a clinical tool. And if you have not yet started using Blue Sky Monitoring, how you can integrate it into your practice workflow as well to raise the standard of care for your patients. Scott. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, this is kind of one of my first lectures, you know, since residency. So uh, it took me back to the old days of doing the presentations and getting ready and doing all the prep work. So that was kind of cool for me to kind of get back in the swing of things. Um, so as Michael said, I'm giving a lecture on remote monitoring today. Uh, it's mainly focused on Blue Sky Monitoring. I am going to just kind of briefly talk about also some other companies as well and kind of why I decided into using Blue Sky Monitoring in my practice. Um, like you said, I was kind of like early on a doctor because I just wanted to really tinker. Um, you know, to move forward, uh, disclosures, I, I have no financial interest um, or support or money or anything given from doing this presentation. Um, I'm a consumer uh, that uses Blue Sky Bio digital products. Um, just, and I'm giving this presentation to basically give you guys my experiences that I've had throughout the whole process of kind of the whole changes with it, and hopefully be able to give you guys some tips on kind of what I learned while tinkering around with it and uh, ultimately implementing it in with uh, my patients. Um, I really like teaching, so this was, you know, really nice for me to kind of get back into it and hopefully maybe start teaching down the line uh, in orthodontic, maybe residencies or even across the country. Um, 
So just a little bit of introduction about me. Um, I grew up in Rochester Hills, Michigan. Uh, you know, we're in the Mitten, Metro Detroit area. Uh, my father was a general dentist in this area. Uh, we grew up, you know, kind of in kind of the more uh, rural area of the north end of the suburbs and everything. Um, he had a small little practice. Um, he implemented orthodontics pretty early on in his dental practice. I was actually his guinea pig patient. I think he did all right. He uh, kind of pulled my, you know, my wires a little bit here and there, but, you know, I got through it. Um, so I appreciate him for kind of getting me that kind of, you know, first wind into the profession. Um, you know, at, at first, I really didn't even think about doing dentistry. I was um, kind of a senior in high school. I was looking at you know, accounting, it, kind of math was my thing. I really liked it, but it just didn't fully, I guess, fulfill what I was maybe looking for. So kind of turned to dentistry and uh, ended up going to Detroit Mercy, which was kind of close to home, which was really nice. Um, and I even stayed home to go to dental school at Detroit Mercy. So I was, you know, kind of through and through a Detroit Mercy person. Um, but I really liked it there. Um, got great educations at both. Um, and that's kind of where it took me, you know, my second and third year, I started applying to ortho residencies, which kind of took me to Rutgers, you know, out of all the places I never would have thought I'd move out to New Jersey. Um, you know, it was a huge culture shock for me, but, you know, I really appreciate it. Um, one of the best things about, uh, Rutgers is that they have so many faculty and, um, that's what really drew me to the program is they, they give you so many different ways to do things and learn from and. Um, I, I think every resident from there, that's like the first thing they're going to tell you is just the amount of people there to give you insight. You really can take advantage of it. And I know it's a three-year program. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do three years. You really learn a lot in those three years. Um, so, you know, I considered it, you know, a really good experience. And I graduated in 2018. Um, I was, in my last year, I was actually elected the chief resident, and you know, one of the big things that kind of went on that year, I don't know if you guys remember, but we just got a trios, and it was supposed to be Invisalign integrated. Um, you know, th th that was kind of really great, but then they decided to pull the rug, and they were like, no, you know, we're not going to, you know, really start accepting these anymore, so there was kind of a big panic, like we just got this thing in our residency, we got all excited about doing it. And all of a sudden they just said, no, we're, you know, we're not going to take it. So, you know, that's when I really started looking into 3D printing and got really interested in it. And, uh, you know, I really, you know, we all laugh, but, you know, I kind of took to YouTube and fortunately, uh, Dr. Baron Grutter had a ton of YouTube videos on how to implement a moon ray into the system. And, you know, the, the program directors, they were all looking at, you know, these SLA printers which I'm not going to get into a ton of 3D printing, but those were kind of slow for, especially for orthodontics. So I was like, you guys got to listen. And, you know, I did my research. I know that this is the right one to get right now. You know, it may change down the line, but, you know, I, I don't know if Baron's watching this, but, you know, if you are, I, I wanted to say thank you. Never got a chance to meet you or anything, but I, you know, I really thank you for kind of getting that bug into 3D printing for me and kind of getting my journey started into bigger things with 3D printing. So, um, you know, and that's when I really started learning through SkyBio, Archform, and, you know, at the time they were very raw. They, I mean, they were just starting almost. I mean, Blue Sky might've been around for a little bit, but, uh, more, but these, you know, were kind of raw for me as a resident to learn from. Uh, but, you know, like anything is the more you practice, the better you'll get. So then I kind of moved home. Um, you know, we, we moved back to our hometown. Uh, this is my at the time, it was my fiance. Now, my wife, when I moved home, we uh, lived with her parents just to kind of get settled and get to work because, you know, we have these looming student loans over us. She's actually a peds and NICU nurse, uh, but she also started helping me in my practice as my what we call a voluntold, uh, jokingly, that she helps me out and kind of keeps the thing, you know, afloat because, uh, as I'll get to in a little bit, we're a little bit different kind of practice. Um, I started working at DSO full time, four days a week, just hit the ground running. And uh, I also opened up at the same time, uh, scratch practice where we were open about a day and a half a week, just at the end of 2018. So I just graduated. I started working four days and, you know, started working on my own practice and at the same time trying to get married. So it was a pretty wild end of the year. I, you know, we, we were pretty stressed out, but in the end, I, I think it all worked out. Um, you know, this last year, we've actually 
added a new addition, Oliver. Uh, he's our seven month old son. And that's kind of when things were like, all right, we need to like scale back on working because we want to have a family life. So um, that's going to kind of take us into the monitoring is that it can help you potentially have more time, you know, or efficiency, at least um, with family. Uh, so right now we're pretty busy or big family. We have a seven, seven month old son, Oliver, and three dogs and a parrot. So if you guys hear any dog noises or parrots, you know, that's going to be us. <laughs> so to kind of move into more of like what's going on with this lecture, you know, th this is a little brief background in my practice. You know, we started, it's a small boutique style practice. I have two, three chairs. I do all the work. There's no pressure in our office. We don't tell people like you need aligners, like that's it. It's, we give options. We try to make it affordable. Um, you know, it's a, we try to see one pe person at a time and actually get to know people. Um, we use all the latest technology. I have scanners, 3D printers, comb beam, soft tissue laser, so we don't have to refer people out for things. Um, I haven't implemented TADS yet. That might be in the future, but um, we try to stay lean and mean, not a ton of staff. And uh, we try to keep overhead down. And we also want to keep our efficiency up so we can have more time at home. Um, to me, that's so important, you know, to have a lifestyle balance. Like I'd love to make tons of money, but at a certain point, it all comes at a cost. So, you know, I'm learning that, you know, try, trying to learn it early on. Um, so that's kind of why I'm trying to leverage uh, technology to help me. Um, I didn't actually mention here, but we also have our dogs here. These are Stoic and Sven. There are puppies that, you know, they, we put them to work sometimes and, you know, but they only ask if they get a pup cup, they have to get a pup cup if they do any work for us or from Starbucks and they know the difference. So that's super important. <laughs> but so to, to get in kind of the meat and potatoes of the presentation now, um, why did I need to implement remote monitoring in my practice? Well, there's so many different reasons, but I kind of labeled it down to six right now. Um, but, you know, the first one is we need to keep a closer eye on our patients uh, without utilizing precious chair time. Everybody is looking for after school. They want after work. They, you know, there's only so many slots in a day that you can fit for those really important. And you're only one person. I mean, you can add more staff, you can add, but these all come at cost as well. Um, you know, catch, catching non-tracking aligners and teeth. That's how we can keep a closer eye. And I'm going to have a little bit of an example here in a in a second on the next slide on kind of what that, you know, kind of picture goes with for the scanning. Um, we also need to decrease our clinical staff or um, we otherwise have to increase our patient load to make the same uh, when we actually implement more people in our pr practice. So we have to become busier, higher volume, you know, but you lose certain things at that point too. Um, we also want to improve compliance. You know, we all get frustrated when people don't wear their aligners. Um, it keeps the patient accountable when, when, when you, you know, put all this time and they put all this money into it and then they can't actually do it. Um, there needs to be some way to actually like keep an eye on them because usually if they're not compliant with their scans, they're usually not wearing their aligners. So it's a way to actually catch people sooner than, you know, say, for example, you send them out with 20 sets of aligners. Well, if they're not wearing them and you don't see them for a planned appointment in, you know, three months, you know, you're, you're going to be missing out on a ton of time. So it's a way to actually catch this sooner and be like, Hey, like what's going on? We got to wear these. Like it's a, it's a good way to coach. I mean, you're almost coaching somebody when you're, you know, the doctor for aligners, you have to kind of keep them motivated because it's just something they have to wear. Um, so it's so important. Um, this is something I'm also gonna touch on in a few slides, but um, eliminating fabricating. So if you're doing a lot of in-house aligners or even just ordering, you're gonna order a bunch of aligners and say they're not tracking well. Well, say for instance, you just made you know 20 sets of trays and you're about to give them out when they come in and nothing's tracking and you just made all this, you know, you paid all this money, but the most important thing is time. The time you wasted making these aligners now just went into the garbage, um, which is brutal. I learned my lesson on one case and I'll never, never let that happen again. I mean, it, I literally cried because of, I spent the time making these myself to fit this patient and they just, it didn't, it didn't work. We had to rescan. So um, this is a great point. 
Um, so the ability to be done at their convenience, you know, we think about virtual consults and all these things and you have to schedule a meeting and everyone's got busy schedules and I, I can't do it at this time. So let's just do it at 7 p.m. Well, I don't want to meet with somebody at 7 p.m. I want to be able to, you know, be with my family, eat dinner and do these things. So, um, you know, every once in a while, it's probably OK. But if you're doing this all the time, it's going to you know burn you out. So convenience is such a you know, factor into all these things nowadays. I mean, Amazon, all these things are convenience, convenience, convenience. So you can't put a price tag on that. Um, you know, reducing the number of in-office appointments. I mean, we all are trying to utilize our chair time more. This kind of touches on number one, but, um, you know, it's super important. You know, the biggest thing with reducing the amount of appointments is the OEL oh, yeah, looks great. I mean, that is the most, I hate that appointment so much with aligners is, because they just don't feel like it's the same thing with the retainer checks like oh yeah they look great well I, why did i just drive all the way over here just for you to tell me it looks good you know if i can you know utilize something that just says hey it looks good or you know you're good to go when you're at home at your convenience it's so much better um you, know, you don't have to deal with that you know that's it kind of mentality and then i think the last thing is com compete with other orthodontic offices using monitoring um competition is always going to be there um, I had a patient who was like, you know, I really went to this other office for a consultation and I really liked that they offer this. And the nice part was, is I was able to say, I can do the same. Um, that was kind of early on. So I was like, okay, you're going to kind of be my guinea pig, but you know, it still, you know, ended up working out and they've been super happy. Uh, everything's been going really well with their treatment. So it, it's definitely a differentiator. So kind of my First point uh, from the previous slide, number one of aligners not tr uh, tracking well. So I'm going to kind of show you guys a spark. So I um, I use tons of different aligner companies. I've been trialing everything I can possibly get my hands on. So this just happened to be a spark patient. Um, I'm kind of getting away from them. I, I There's for many reasons, but that's not a part of this lecture. I'm kind of getting away from them. Um, so if you guys have questions in the future, you can always let me know what you think or ask it away and I'll, I'll be happy to try and answer. Um, but this is an example of a spark case. You know, everything's tracking well. It's a pretty difficult case. This is actually one I discussed possibly about maybe even a lower incisor traction or possibly lower braces, but it's a lot of IPR here. Um, so you can definitely see this is going to be a tough one. We need a lot of root movement on the lower left too. Um, so I, I kind of anticipate this case slipping. So it's nice because I can keep an eye on this patient with monitoring. And as you can see, as we're progressing through, the two and the three on the left side aren't tracking as well. Funny thing is the right is very similar, but it tracks really well. So you can just see it's not always just, you know, compliance or the treatment plan because it can be pretty similar, but just certain teeth are stubborn. Um, but the biggest pearl I want to kind of mention here is I'm going to use my pointer here, but you can see as the aligner is slipping, it's kind of intruding or pushing on that attachment. So actually that attachment now has gone from helping me to hurting me. And this is why some if you go really far along, you might actually start to see this really intrude this tooth a lot, and it's going to be a problem later. Luckily for this, I was actually able to see that, and I said, hey, you know, you need to come in. We reached out to her, and then we polished those attachments off, and we'll pick those up later. I advise Chewies to help those seed in until we're ready for that next refinement, because everywhere else it was seeding pretty well. So that's a little bit of a pearl for you guys. Um, just in general, when you're tracking with aligner cases, you kind of see that. Um, let's see. The other part of number three is, you know, typically when we're ordering aligners, kind of the old mentality, like for example, with using Invisalign, when you approve the ClinCheck, they send you an initial set and it's a big old box of trays. So 50 sets, for an example, you know, you got them all made, you're ready to go. You know, you might give a little bit now or all of them, whatever you want to do. Um, but this is kind of a new mentality of kind of ordering in batches or making in batches. So, you know, typically when we do an initial set, we give out and then, you know, if if we throw it away, that's OK. Like no one cares because I didn't make them. But, you know, that comes with a cost. You know, these aligner companies are not cheap. So this kind of brought up my idea of batching things. And I, I don't think I'm the only one doing this. So I think a lot of people are starting to do more stuff like this. It definitely helps you with a lot of in-house cases, but you can still do it if you batch orders. Um, 
So basically you start out with a small part. So say it just for an example, you have a 12 set of aligners treatment plan here. So you might give the first five. Um, so we give that to the patient, then we track them with our eye smile scans. And I will get to kind of my intervals in a little bit. You can, there's a lot of different options for that, but you'll track at some point through. And then at some point you will either say, hey, you're looking good or hey, you're not looking so good. So you can actually pivot. If you're not looking good, you're gonna to go to a refinement when you come in, or you can pivot to actually give more of those extra sets. But because you had a scan at your own convenience, now you have some leeway time to start making those so or order, because it's gonna take time for them to come in. So that's buying you the time. Otherwise you would have to bring them in, check, then make, and then bring them in, make them, or to give them, and then it's just more office visits, but by doing this, you're decreasing those needs, but also seeing it so you can check ahead. So then you give part two, same kind of deal, keep going. Then if, if they're ready for the next set, or if it's a refinement, you'll know to bring them in. So it just kind of goes in line to know where you're batching. So I think that's really great. Um, hey, Scott, can I can just jump you. in one second? Oh yeah, go ahead. Just want to clarify something. I smile is the patient's facing brand. So essentially for the clinician, it's Blue Sky Monitoring, and that's how you access your remote monitoring via blueskymonitoring.com. But we don't want patients obviously going to blueskybio.com or Blue Sky Monitoring. The Blue Sky Bio brand obviously is a brand that sells and caters to and provides implants and digital solutions to the clinicians. So for that reason, we created a patient-facing brand, which is iSmile. When they download the app for remote monitoring, it's going to be branded with the iSmile logo, the iSmile name. And that's the patient facing brand. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I did not mention that, but it's it's really nice that it's through an app. And I'm actually about to get into that too, with the app and everything like that too. But um, so this kind of brings me up to the different kind of monitoring companies. So um, this is growing. Uh, it's definitely everyone's starting to get into the teledentistry market. I think it's it's here to stay, and it's going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and these are kind of the five that I've currently known about. Um, and the ones that I'm going to kind of discuss today, um, you know, dental monitoring, they're sort of the pioneer in the market from my understanding. Um, Grin is, you know, coming into, uh, it's created by an orthodontist named Adam Shuloff, who I think is a really great guy. Um, Smile Snap, I don't have a ton of familiarity with. I'm going to have a few snippets of it from what I've seen, but I haven't like demoed or anything like that with it. Um, Blue Sky Monitoring. Um, which obviously I'm talking about today, and then also Invisalign Virtual Care. Um, so that kind of brings me into, I kind of made up a table um, to kind of discuss the advantages and disadvantages of what I found of each product. Um, it's not all the information. These are just some highlights. Uh, I'm sure if you really went in and dove in and you know did demos and do all these things, you'll really find out more. But this is just kind of the outside look at you know generally what I was looking at with these. Um, I'm going to start with dental monitoring. It's an AI driven, uh, it uses AI to check the aligners for you, which is really nice. I mean, it lets you basically not have to do any checks. It, it kind of checks it for you. Not really crazy about that personally. I mean, to me, I see, you know, I've seen Invisalign outcome simulators look horrible. So I don't know if I'm like all on board on AI, but I would definitely say they're probably, if you're really looking for an AI driven one, that's probably your best bet. Usually, um, it's geared towards bigger practices. So if you're really, really, really busy, you know, you don't have time. There's not enough time to check all these. I mean, you can have a staff member, but I'm sure they like that it's an AI person or AI driven. That way it's consistent. Um, it is open platform, which means that any aligner can be any aligner company or a brand or in-house, whatever you want, you can use it. It's not specific to a certain brand. Um, they do have a new fancy click on scope. It isn't like the same picture from before. They've changed it. It's not a retractor that's hooked into this big box thing. It's actually um, a little bit different now. Um, I'm sure it's a lot better, um, it, it, but it's by far the most expensive product that I found. Um, it seems like they kind of nickel dime you every way possible. Um, it, it's also a very large increase in overhead. So. You know, you're paying staff to probably look at these scans. You're probably paying this thing. It, it can definitely eat into your margins for sure, um, is what I've heard from most orthodontists that are using it. It's definitely not cheap. Um, and at, the thing that really kind of turned me off to them is them partnering with a lot of direct-to-consumer companies like Candid. 
um, grin uh, claims it has AI assistance, but I'm not sure how it compares to dental monitoring. I've not personally used it. Um, it is also an open platform and it has a nice scope. It seems like kind of dental monitoring took a lot of the ideas from them and kind of implemented it. So I, I think there's a big rift there between those companies, but it's still a moder moderately expensive option. Um, Smile Snap, I don't really know a ton about. I've kind of looked at their website. It seemed personally more like it was a virtual consultation kind of place and they just kind of add this in. So I don't think they have a lot of you know features like scopes and um, probably not as much. You know, it had a nice app it looked like, but I think they really definitely pushed the consultations more than this part. Um, Blue Sky Monitoring, really low cost. Um, a little bit of a touch here is that it's um, a low cost for the software is actually free right now. Um, it's likely going to move towards a one-time patient fee of $29. Um, but if you order Lab Pronto aligners, it's actually included. So you get the monitoring for free. And as well, you get a scope for free if you do Lab Pronto aligners, which has a $13 value as well. So even if you do pay the $13 for a scope, that's a completely reasonable amount of money for a scope. I mean, it, it, it's significantly less than most of the other companies that are charging. Um, but it is an open platform. You can use this you know, on anything. You don't have to be locked into a certain system to use it, which is great. Having that flexibility is awesome. Uh, you also have the ability to print the scopes in-house. So you, and I'm going to touch on this later, but you can actually print these yourself, which is great. Um, it's a significant cost savings, um, but I am going to touch more. There, there are some cons to it, um, it you know, and Invisalign virtual care. Um, it's a free, a free system for Invisalign patients only. So you can see that they close the system. Of course, Align technology closing a system. It's just the way that they do business. Um, you know, love it or hate it. Uh, it. It only takes photos. So all these other options are that I'm talking to you about usually are using a video of some sort. Uh, it has its pros and cons. Uh, it is a nice app, but uh, it definitely isn't, and it's not as perfect as you might think. Um, the retractor is cheap. It's about $4 on Align's website. Um, you can definitely get those cheaper elsewhere, but of course, Align, they got to you know, four times it for cost. Um, but it is hard to get constant or consistent photos because there's in the retractors, which I'm gonna explain in a second. Um, as the table goes from left to right, it's really interesting to see how the cost goes down as the company diversifies itself. Um, its products don't become reliant on selling a monitoring system because they have other streams of revenue. So it's, they can actually drop the prices of these things, you know, with dental monitoring grin there, that's what they do. That's all they do. And it's great. They have probably some really awesome features, but you're going to pay for it because they, that's their, that's how they make their money. And I get it. It's a business, um, but it is nice to be able to have options. So how did we get started doing this? You know, this is just kind of a far-fetched idea, like, hey, let's just kind of see what we can do. We're not a busy, super busy office, so we can kind of tinker around. So this is not actually all on your patient, but this is a retractor and texting. You know, you, the nice thing about it is they're cheap. You can buy retractors in bulk for way less than a dollar, give it to people. You don't even care. It's just, here, take it. I don't, it. Like, I just want you to use it. Like, if it saves me one visit, I'm cool with it. I got my return on investment. Um, you know, it's easy for patients to integrate. I mean, who doesn't know how to take a picture and text? Um, so that was really nice. But the pr biggest issue is it's not HIPAA compliant and it's super hard to stay organized. I mean, you have to basically follow this phone all over the place and uh, try to organize it, maybe put it into your practice management system. Um, so it's not great. It's, it, it's maybe good for a few patients here and there, but it's definitely not something you can scale. Um, you know, this is an example of an expander patient where we wanted to check how many turns and save them visits because of course they want to come after school. So why not just do this? I can do the same thing that I would do if you came in and just tell you to do more turns. So you can see they did a really great job here. So then I kind of moved on when Smile, this iSmile app came out. At that time, it was kind of a, uh, as Michael said, it was more bio big box than iSmile. So it's kind of like integrating um, and I'm going to touch on this a little more, but there was kind of a little bit of a difference in terms of how scans were collected and everything. Um, but at the time, I didn't have a printer yet, and 
we weren't really, or Blue Sky was not selling scopes at the time. So I was like, oh, I'll just use these retractors and just use the app. They're like, oh yeah, that's great. Um, so it's very similar to Invisalign virtual care at this point, you know, we're using a retractor. There's a way that they send the, the video or the pictures, um, but there was really no way to control the distance of the camera. So you get like this example where it's like super far away or, you know, you're really, really close. Uh, you just never knew what you were really gonna get. Um, and I hated having, you know, the distracting background, you know, when you're seeing kind of their tile in their bathroom or, you know, I, it's sometimes TMI and I really don't want to see someone's house like that. So, but it is much more organized. I mean, it was nice to be able to have photos and videos coming into a certain platform on the computer, to download them, look at them, give patient feedback through the app, message them. It was HIPAA compliant, really secure. It was really great. But then we finally got scopes, which definitely made things a lot better. Um, so this is kind of the scope and I smile together. Um, you know, it gave a much more consistent controlled zoom. The, the patient didn't have a way to get around it. It was you snap the thing on and it's that way and it's going to show me what I need to see. Um, it definitely eliminated the distracting background, which is nice. I didn't have to see all these things in their house and I could just focus and be objective and professional. Um, so if I show people, hey, this is like, you know, what your teeth look like, and I can just put it up on a screen and, hey, it's all teeth. Um, no one wants to see what color hair they have or how much facial hair they have. Um, and it's still HIPAA compliant because it's still using the same app. Uh, Michael did comment on this. He said it, they could have zoomed in a little more, but um, I think this was before I started. And I'm going to get to a modified scopes here in a second, but I kind of liked it to be a certain distance. Um, so that way it was the same, but it was still close enough. I didn't want to rely on a patient to zoom in too far or too little. So I didn't want them touching the zoom. And that's kind of why this was probably an early on scope. Um, so how do we organize all this? Like it was insane when I first started using it, it was really hard. It was, you know, we were using bio big box. It was basically a Dropbox for dentistry. Um, I don't know if you have it yet, but it's you know, really amazing to communicate or send files to people um, with HIPAA compliance. Um, it was somewhat, you know, organized, but it was really hard to keep track of when patients were due for scans. I, I tried doing these stickers on the bags and, you know, even with the bags, they were like, I don't have a request. So they'd have to call or text and be like, hey, I need a request. And then you send it and then they won't do it for like two days. And, um, you know, or sometimes if you send it too early, because you just want them to have it. So that when they get to the sticker, they'll just do it that day. They don't actually wait for the sticker. So it just got really, oh, it got really annoying. So um, th there are a lot of advancements and I'm gonna get to those soon, but you know, I this is just kind of a little bit of a side tip here as I started using Asana. Um, Asana is a free organizing kind of like app, I guess you could say, but it's also for the computer, but it's like a sticky note organizer. So instead of having a whole dashboard of sticky notes, on your wall, you can actually digitize them. And there's like a board feature um, that you can kind of move them around and give tasks to certain people and they get it on their computer. Um, there is a free version. I kind of use the free version right now because I just like to keep it for simplicity. Um, and I'm trying to use it not just for the eye smile, but I use it for tasks in the office, like calling insurances. And I'm gonna kind of show you here in a second. Um, they have partnered with Align Technology and started Asana Smiles for Invisalign orders and ClinChecks. Um, but they haven't really been using it for something like this. Um, so this is kind of an example of my board. You can see on the left side, um, there's like tasks. Um, it's really great. You can customize it however you want. There's orthodontic labs. Uh, I had Sparkle Liners on here, U-Lab, in-house, um, I smile scans. That's just kind of what I'm going to show you here, insurance stuff. So it's kind of, you don't have to just use it for this. It's kind of an open source and you can customize it however you want. Um, but you can see, um, I had different categories and these are kind of the different sticky notes, but I had categories for in progress patients going through active aligner wear, um, you know, the scan sent, um, you know, this is basically when I would send the request and I was expecting to get it back. These are kind of the people, if it went too long, I'd be like, Hey, what's going on? We need to get a scan in you're overdue. And that's when you can kind of tell some of these people are not compliant. Um, and um, there's almost like an embarrassment. Like that's kind of some of the reason why they don't sometimes because if they're not wearing them, I don't want you to see that I'm not wearing them. Um, so you can kind of check these things and catch them earlier um, and stay organized because people get lost in translation. 
Um, I also have the waiting for refinement because they're not in active treatment. There's no reason to be sending any scans. And then also when they're due for an appointment, I can let Melinda know uh, that, you know, hey, we need to get this person in because they're due for their next, you know, if they're not compliant, I can bring them in. Or if they're not tracking, that, that's when she knows to bring them in. Um, the sticky notes do have due dates. You can actually see these here. Those are kind of when I would set the request to go out and then it's super easy to know. So I'm going to kind of move into the next step of printing. So the you know I kind of dived into the printing realm and uh, this is kind of an example of our printer kind of making one of the first scopes that we were trying to make. Uh, this is actually straight from the STL file that Michael has with Blue Sky that they will give you and it's free um, so you can print them yourself. Um, but it comes down to what printers do we use? I mean, a lot of us, you know, most offices are using resin style printers, especially in orthodontic offices to print models for retainers, aligners, whatever. But also these resins are not biocompatible. So, you know, most of it's not really a good idea to be using on for scopes. Um, you know, I wouldn't personally want to be putting some of these resins in my mouth, even though it is cured. Um, you know, there's better options. Um, you could use like a surgical guide resin, but it's definitely not a cheap option, um, which I know it's autoclavable. So if you really wanted to get, you know, really crazy about it, but to me, you know, the, the better option is just to consider maybe a filament style printer. Uh, these are mainly used by hobbyists. Um, so there is a kind of a long story, which I'll get to in a second, why I actually got one of these is not so much for dentistry, but I was actually considering it. But the nice part is the filament is a PLA substance, which is, I believe, I believe it's a plant-based um, product. It's polyactic acid, which when you look at the MDS or MSDS pages, you know, describing basically, is this gonna harm people? You know, it's basically saying everything's fine. I'm pretty sure people make these for toys for their kids. Um, and I'm sure they put them in their mouth. So it's just a, a general appearance for parents and kids and adults that like, hey, I'm putting this in my mouth and I know it's fairly safe. Um, they don't have to question you. You know, as soon as you start getting into the question, it, it doesn't look good for you. Um, but I do recommend good ventilation if you are going to do this. Um, I, even if you didn't, I, I think you'd be okay. But it, you know, even the MSDS does recommend probably good ventilation. You probably don't want to be breathing this stuff in as the fumes are there. You know, once it's kind of made and cooled off, it's really not in existence. Um, so right around the time that Blue Sky was able to make the STL file to print, my brother-in-law, uh, he really wanted to start hobby printing. So it kind of just the stars aligned and we ended up getting an Ender 3 S1 Pro. Um, it goes for around $400. Um, you know, that can range, a lot of these printers range from 200 to $1,000. Um, I'm pretty sure Prusa, I believe, is one of the more expensive ones. I'm sure it's really nice. Um, you know, it's more, I, I think, how you, know what you're doing with it more than the actual product itself probably um, but he wanted to print a lot of stuff for his big toolboxes and organizing and everything like that so we got really into this like hey how can we like let's do this like let's jump in and learn this so it was kind of fun for us um, we found after you know printing and getting everything kind of figured out we we got it down to about two scopes but it takes about 18 hours which is a long time um, that's probably too long. If you're a bigger practice to make this many scopes and get caught up, you probably can't keep up with it. So um, probably going to recommend if you're a bigger office, it's probably better just to buy the $13 scopes or, you know, if you're using LabPronto, get the free one. Um, it, it's just, you're never going to be able to keep up. We were lucky enough that we're not the, you know, really, really massive, large scale practice. So we just did like two, three weeks of printing you know, every day and we kind of built up, which you'll see in a second, kind of my little like stash that I have. And he also got really crazy. He bought all these spools. So we did all these colors and um, which I'll explain here in a second why I, I don't want a lot of colors, but he kind of had fun with it. Um, and, you know, basically I found, we kind of did the math, 20 scopes last about one spool. Um, that was a spool that we bought. I'm sure there's different sizes and everything. But I would say, generally speaking, it's about a dollar a scope after you do the math. That does not include the printer costs. If you add that, I'm sure it'll go up. 
but if you're using it for other things, it doesn't really, you know, in the end, doesn't really matter. Um, so this is kind of actually, I kind of reimagined or redid kind of how it goes with the scope. Um, you know, I didn't like how long it was. I thought we could decrease the printing time if we made it shorter. But at the same time, I didn't even think about this, but decreasing the height would actually make it so the zoom didn't need to be used either. So kind of was a, a good thing for two things um, to help us. I also tried custom logos. The, the issue was, is they never really printed out like they did on the actual um, on the actual product itself. They kind of looked a little more raw than it did on the actual screen. But I thought it was really nice. I really try to push brand awareness. Um, you know, if I'm giving aligners, I'm trying to get my sticker on those boxes. If I'm giving retainer cases, it's got to have my logo. I want people in the community like, hey, you're doing, you know, Invisalign, you know, hey, where are you going? And it's all over their stuff. So that way they're like, I want to go there. I like what he's doing. Um, so I think brand awareness is is huge. I, I, you know, when your brand awareness is another company, I, I, to me, that's not helping you. That's helping, you know, this big, huge company like Invisalign, for example. Um, this is kind of what the finalized, you know, scope. The left side is kind of one of my first ones. That's where I got the idea. I kind of hacked off the one part of it. You can see that that's basically on the left, there's like all these supports. We learned that we were trying to learn the software. It automatically added these supports, but it didn't really need to be there. So that's why that big hunk of plastic, which probably took forever to print. Um, but that's where I kind of hacked that one off and I super glued it to it and I tried it on myself. I'm like, oh, this is actually gonna work. So then I spent all the time digitizing it and cutting the, the scope so it would actually be shorter like this. What another thing you can see is how translucent this is. It's actually somewhat hollow, so it's not really heavy or dense, um, which is why it's not a three-day print, not in, as opposed to 18 hours or two. Um, so this is kind of my final scope design. Uh, you can see we decided kind of on a marble finish. I think it looks really nice. Um, I didn't add the, the logo. I just didn't think it looked that good yet. I did add supports, so when the print's better, and then I also, um, made it shorter. So these are kind of the finals. And then this is the box O scopes, I call it. So when a patient gets started, we bring the box over, they get to pick their color. Big thing I don't like are the colors is that they are indecisive. I, I have to like, all right, guys, we got to pick a color here. So that's why I'm kind of moving towards the one color. So that way it's like, this is what you get. And you just keep moving forward. Um, just because- Do you use the colors. shorter scopes across the board or do you find that for adults, the, lo the longer scopes are better and for the kids, the shorter? All short. Better. All, All short. short. I am thinking in the future of maybe shrinking the entire scope itself or shrinking just the scope part. So Pete, like a eight-year-old or nine-year-old could do it. I think it's a little probably too big. I think Grin right now is actually, they have a smaller scope for like early treatment. Um, so I thought about maybe there's a way we could shrink it at some point, which that's going to come at the end. Um, kind of one of our future things is maybe considering doing like smaller um, scopes um, for those like phase one or expander checks, kind of like I showed earlier. Um, but this is, I, I really found that this is kind of the sweet spot for the distance. I mean, it could probably be even shorter, I think, but um, it, it seemed to, I didn't really want to tinker around anymore because it did take some time. So I kind of found this one. I was like, I'm sticking with it for now and I'm just going to run. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so example case, um, you know, this is nothing too crazy. I kind of want to show you guys a case. This is not mind blowing mechanics, mind, you know, anything of a case. Um, but it, it has some good points in it. Um, you know, I think we kind of see a lot of these in our practices of, Hey, I lost my retainer. My teeth shifted. I want to get them back. I'm getting married in six months. What can you do for me? And, you know, this is a mild, moderate crowding case. Um, she did not want to, you know, do full braces. I, you know, even how pro climb this case is and crowded out, I was like, you know, if you were probably younger and, you know, really wanted comprehensive treatment, I probably would, you know, recommend extractions and braces here. Um, but that, that wasn't really in her goals and I get it. Like, I'm not here to push it, but I, I did mention like, Hey, you know, your teeth are not going to finish perfect. You have to be okay with that. You know, and as long as they're okay with it and, you know, I know my job can be done and not cause a problem for them, then it's okay. I have had patients come in 
they're like, I just want limited. I'm like, I can't, like I've done setups and I can't fix your teeth without screwing them up. That's where it's, you know, that's where it's our job as the specialists or, you know, the dentist to know when these cases should be done or not. Um, so, uh, you know, of course, you know, we got to try and do this in six, eight months. I'm like, okay, well, we got to do this now. So um, we kind of got going and we went after it. You can see, you know, probably a lot of these things, you know, the canines being out, it, you know, they're in a decent class one occlusion. So we kind of just told her, hey, we're going to fix the front teeth. You're going to need a decent amount of IPR. And that's kind of what takes the most time in these cases is doing, you know, the significant amount of IPR needed. Um, so we treatment planned IPR in-house aligners. Um, we used the Blue Sky Bio, um, a retention plan of upper and lower clear retainers, and then a fixed retainer on the lower. I really like the FlexTech. It's easy to bond. It's passive. Uh, but that's a whole nother lecture. <laughs> this is just the pan real quick. Um, so I'm going to kind of sequence how we kind of did this case. So we had the consult, um, brought her back. We were actually, she started the same day. So we started manufacturing. So I did the first set of aligners manufacturing. I was able to get those back to her in a week because I knew time was, time was there. We had to rock and roll. Um, so I thought that was pretty impressive. And I think that impresses patients when you can get them, you know, going, Sooner than later, you know, you're waiting three weeks for aligners. They've already kind of lost that motivation. So it, to me, it's getting them as soon as possible and getting them going. It's not to be aggressive in terms of selling and getting money and all that. It's to get them so you can catch that motivation for compliance. Um, so we did a 10 day changes at the time. I was kind of still messing around with my blue sky settings, um, which now I've kind of restructured you know one thing nice about blue skies you can really tailor how you want to move it i kind of went through and used the case that i saw from invisalign and the movements on invisalign and what i was seeing with the movements for weekly changes um so that's you'll eventually see i switched to weekly um so uh, basically we did the first six i actually at the time was not using i smile there so we just brought her in i had more ipr to do anyway so um i brought her in did more ipr gave more sets Yes, I think uh, I played with fire there because I could have made him and she wasn't doing it. But, you know, that ignorance is bliss. Uh, but then then we started doing the virtual checks, you'll see. So once we got to tray 10, we did an eye smile scan. And I'm going to show you that in a second. I just take snapshots for this, but they are videos just to F FYI for you. But I figured just a picture will be OK. And we won't have to worry about bug issues. Um, and then I also have one at number 14. So this is actually at uh, tray 10, upper and lower. Um, you can see everything's tracking really nicely. Um, you know, the lower actually moved pretty significantly. We're really gonna be fighting this upper right too, which we all knew that's kind of like the, the uh, oh my gosh, the rate limiting step I like to tell patients. There's always one tooth that's gonna be the one that's, that's gonna be the one that takes the longest. I actually thought the lower right one, but you'll see as we progress, that one actually tracked really well and did a great job. Um, and then you can see at tray 14, we started to lose that, you know, slippage because after 14 sets, you know, your, your digital treatment plan isn't always going to translate to how it goes. No matter how good you are, no matter how good the patient is, it doesn't always matter. Teeth are, you know, I, I always tell patients as soon as they start, I'm like, this is golf. I don't know if you play golf, but there is no first set that usually gets you all the way to the end. No one hits a hole in one. You have to realize refinements are going to be a part of your treatment. Um, so this is why this is kind of great. We got to actually the end, started to slip, but this is easily kind of picked up now. So we scan. The lower actually came out pretty nice after 14. We, we hit a pretty good driver for the lower. Um, so that's where I brought her in. We did a scan. Treatment plan nine upper because that, that stubborn upper, upper right too and uh, five on the lower. So, you know, the uneven aligners, you really have to coach people. You have to tell them, you get to five, you still have to wear it because you will have people go, oh no, I don't, I, I didn't wear it. You, you, it got to the end and I just thought, oh, my teeth are going to stay. And so always coach them if you're doing it where they're going to stop at a certain point. Now there are ways to kind of divvy it out, like doing lower two weeks and then upper one week. And then you just kind of extend it out which is kind of something in, in that that's like a whole nother kind of realm of getting into like treatment planning and how do we, but that's kind of what we did here. Um, 
so we did actually a pickup for those first five sets. She did actually did not even have to come in. We just boxed everything and put it on our side door. She was able to pick them up. And, you know, with how good she was doing, I wasn't too worried. I mean, if she was going to have issues, I would check. Um, but sometimes I'll just, you know, let them pick them up. Um, and then we did a small eye style scan at number five. And that's what you're going to see here. Everything's tracking really nicely. The aligners look great. Um, real happy. So she's going to, at this point, be wearing five as a retainer and keep progressing on the upper. Um, I actually didn't have six and nine yet. That's where she did that scan. I told her, hang on, give me a week, made six and nine. And I told her, wear five as a retainer. Um, we did weekly changes at that point. And then at some point, we did some little bit of IPR just to kind of touch up. Um, around now, she was kind of getting into the wedding. So I'm sure we took off a few attachments and all that fun stuff. Um, and then we brought her in for kind of an intraoral scan. So you can see this is kind of where we got to at a certain point for the final refinement. Lower arch looks pretty good. Midlines are on. You can see we did not change the canine. You know, they don't look perfect. But if we start moving these, you're kind of flirting with disaster here. And that's where you could start getting interferences on occlusion. And, you know, you might get into water. We're trying to keep this simple. I'm trying to keep this to less than a year. Um, so at this refinement, I'm just doing upper arch. I'm just working on the stubborn upper right too. Lower arch is just a retainer. So I made a new retainer and we kind of hit the ground running. It was eight upper weekly changes. Um, I used kind of an 040 um, retainer type plastic to get that really just, I want to get that thing done and nudged. Um, did a little bit of IPR at that visit. Um, and then we have her schedule. I'm not doing any eye smile scan. She's been compliant. We, we keep up with her just texting or calling her and everything's going well. Um, we could do it, but it, it's just, we're just going to schedule her. We know everything's pretty much going to be where it needs to. And worst case scenario, if the upper needs a nudge, I'll bond the fixed retainer, do the nudge, and then just bring her back again if I really need to. Um, this ended up being around 50 aligners, um, top and bottom, to, I guess, total. Um, so a little over one year, which is kind of what I estimated for her. Um, and this is not a cherry pick case. I just kind of picked one that I thought would be a really good one to present in terms of, you know, learning and for you guys to be taught. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I finished this one in five months. Um, we were right on schedule or maybe a little longer. That's okay. Yeah, I'm cool with it. And then um, it was about 10-ish visits. So just to throw a number out there, say you charge this patient $3,000 and it was 10 office visits. You just made $300 a visit, which I think is pretty good. It's not that bad um, for a pretty straightforward case. I, I'm going to take like a two second break. Is there any questions or anything? Um, let me see here. Guys, if you have any questions that you want to pose, you could type them into the Q&A box and we'll address them and we'll address them during the webinar presentation. Perfect. All right. I'm going to keep going then. All right. Example case setup. So I'm going to kind of breeze through this. I think most of us know how to do a case setup. Um, you know, you put the patient information in, um, you know, kind of go in. The next step is create treatment. So this is actually the new system of the dashboard, which I'm kind of getting you guys used to is this is going to be a lot easier to use, a lot easier to implement. Um, kind of to get down here with creating a treatment plan. One of the tips that I recommend is using for the treatment name is I usually do it whatever kind of batch that is. So is it the initial set, refinement one? Because as you progress through these, they're gonna to get to an end of this and then you can actually make another treatment name for the next set of aligners and then they will track and then you can actually have it all organized nicely in the, the dashboard. Um, these are all kind of standard. Usually the start date's when you deliver the aligners. This is a big thing I kind of worked with Michael on is doing a trial scan at the beginning. So when you deliver them, you want to be able to do like a practice one in the office to make sure they can actually do this. And if they have questions, it will definitely improve your compliance on being able to know how to do it. Um, and it shows them that it's easy. Um, this is kind of something new, but other than the addition or the number of sets, so you want to put in how many sets of aligners you have for this set and then what frequency you're changing. I'm going to get to the add models. This is kind of a newer feature. Um, so I have a slide for that too in a second. Um, so requesting scans, uh, this is also part of the initial setup. So after you do the career training plan, you're going to request scans. Um, usually I set it to zero. I usually do after the aligner change. The biggest thing with that is that you may have to use some chewies to get that fully seated. 
Um, and that's usually what I recommend if I don't see it, but I want to remind them that Chewies are okay to use for a few days. Like we want you to use those because as you keep going, it's gonna keep going through and through and you're gonna track better. Um, and then scan type. So this is typically my protocol. There's a ton of options. You can do whatever you want. This is just kind of what I do. This is my go-to kind of way of doing it. It's horizontal, open. So they have their mouth open uh, with the current aligner and then the same thing without the aligner in. That way I can see the bottom teeth. Sometimes I'll even send, I, I believe there's an option you, you can do a select type of a photo if you wanna do just an anterior bite down. I'll sometimes do that if I'm a little worried about their bite. Um, but it's really customizable. It's really nice. I mean, you can really do it however you want, which is great. Um, the thing that I kind of do, and you'll see here, so if you select weekly, it's going to send weekly scans every week. I kind of get away from that. And I talk, Michael and I have been kind of talking about this. Um, I usually do four week checks because first of all, compliance, it's hard to get someone to do this probably every week. I, I, I'm sure there's people out there that can get it. Um, but I also have to check these because in my practice, I don't have someone doing this for me at the moment. So this is my way of that I've found as a sweet spot or sometimes even doing two or three week intervals before doing a new skin because it just gets kind of redundant. I don't want them to think, oh yeah, it looks good. Oh yeah, it looks good. Oh yeah, it looks good. Well, he's just going to say it looks good and then she's going to stop or he's going to stop. So I've kind of found four weeks is really nice. It kind of goes along with the monthly adjustment kind of thing too. So people kind of get that. Um, you know, like I was talking about patient compliance with scans. I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm really, you know, this is the biggest thing is it really tells you how compliant these people are with their aligners. So that's first and foremost. I, I The age discrepancy, definitely I've gotten a little bit of pushback from older people, um, you know, 50 and above. Usually they're not as technology, you know, sensitive or savvy. And they usually have issues. They, t they fumble with it and they just finally give up. So sometimes I still have to bring these people in, which is okay. I don't try to pressure these people like, hey, it's not like, oh my gosh, like I pay you all this money a month. You've got to use this. Like I need you to use it because if you don't, I'm just throwing money away. So I really like it where I don't feel like I have to pressure these people into it. But if I can save myself two visits, like that's great. I'll take it. Um, you know, the initial setup and whatnot costs are minuscule to me to save on those few visits even that I saved. Younger people, it's hit or miss. You have some really great ones. And it's kind of like aligners with teens. Like you'll get really great ones. Like they're the best ever. And then you have ones who are just like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like this can't be. Um, so, you know, I'm still brainstorming some of this. Um, you know, and I'm still figuring it out. You know, that's why they call it practicing, I guess. Um, one of What's the your recommendation in terms of aligner change frequency? Do you generally... I stick to one week unless I see something like like something that's like really jumping out at me. I really like one week because I know it boosts compliance. People like something new. Now, uh, now get back to that. I sometimes will do two weeks, but I don't try. I try to stay away from 10 days now because it really throws people off for some reason. Um, I think you can sometimes use like a tracking app. I know Trayminder, I think, has a tracking app, um, but people just fall off the bandwagon on that, too, I feel like so. I try to stick to one or two weeks. And to me, it's how you set up the bagging. So if you're setting up the bagging of these trays, so say like I was, if you have 10 upper and five lower, you know, you can draw out that lower over those 10 weeks. So you, but they'll wear that one for two weeks. So you just set up the bags that every two weeks, that new lower will be in there with the new upper. So it's just bag bag management. Um, so that's, that's a great point. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's definitely, I try to stick to the week because it's easy to follow on the counter. Every Friday, this is what I'm doing. Or every Thursday, this is what I'm doing. Um, so we actually, I, the app will send the patient reminders and then we'll ask them to confirm that they've changed their aligners. So in terms of tracking compliance, you know, the app will help with that. And it's interesting because we built the system essentially to request the scans based on the aligners change date. And that's, I have not gotten to that yet. That's actually in, not in terms of the presentation. I have not gotten to that, even just implementing it, but I have seen it. I have one patient that I think I showed you guys like the name of setting them up. He said, he's going to try and do that for me. So I don't have feedback yet on that, but I'm kind of excited because that will be nice to be able to track that. Um, one of the biggest pearls I have is, you know, putting underliner numbers really big on your trays. Um, or aligners. 
uh, when you do the scope, it's nice when it's on the buckle and really big, you can actually see, you don't have to rely on them. Now that's a lot different now with the app. Hopefully that will improve. But before the app, this was like a big way of me checking to like, hey, you're on number seven. I don't need to like text you and bother you to like find out. Um, this is actually really nice. The blue sky is probably the only one that I've used that lets you actually modify it to yourself. Um, I think ULab, it's got a set number. It's really small and tiny. It's really hard to see. Um, so that, you know, that's kind of one of my big pearls. Kind of one of the new dashboard features here. This kind of replaced the bio big box platform. So it's really nice. Um, it's still, I, you know, from it's fairly new, but um, Michael's been really diligent on like getting this stuff like fixed up and nice. And I'm really impressed with what he's doing here. Um, but so this is a lot better than the bio big box. Uh, it's a lot more organized. Um, this hopefully will replace my Asana soon. Uh, I'm still holding on because I still am grasping on to figure this out and learn everything just like anyone else, but I'm looking forward to it. The biggest one for me is the dates. We got to get those updated to not be day, month, year, because even patients are like, I don't know what this means. Like, this makes no sense. There's no 20 month. And I'm like, I know we're, we're working on it, but yeah. Um, yeah it's, so I think that's going to get changed and it's cool. Like, I mean, I get it now, but like, that's definitely going to probably be a change. Um, the align, like I said, uh, or as Michael said, the aligner change track fit. Um, I'm still kind of learning that. I have not implemented that yet, but I'm kind of excited about it because it's just nice to be organized and actually know like where you're at and you don't have to have that interaction or bother them. Um, One second, can you just go back to the previous slide? Oh, yeah. second, maybe go for it. Explain what, or I'm happy to explain what we're seeing here on the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So, another thing that we have here is that kind of when you have these, you have all these, I'm still kind of learning this too. This is kind of why I still have Asana is that I'm not quite familiar with when these things kind of go. And, and I know you have videos on this, which are great. I just need to really hone in on it. Right. So let me um, jump in. Let me jump in and give it two minutes for you, if that's okay. First of yeah. all, we have educational information regarding Blue Sky Monitoring in all of our digital products on blueskybio.university. So that's www.blueskybio.university. But basically to break it down, what we see on the side of the screen is the list of all the patients. Okay, so if everything's great with the patient, they'll have a green frame around and show that everything's, that's an indication that everything's great with the patient. If there's something overdue on the patient side, meaning that they should have changed their liner and confirmed the change, or they should have done a scan and they didn't do the scan, then they're going to have a, a red frame around it. If there's compliance from the patient side, but the clinician hasn't yet reviewed the scan that came in, then you'll have pending review and you'll have that uh, teal type color going around the frame of the patient. And again, the green is the up to date. So basically you could click on either one of these categories and it will filter your patients based on their status. If there's something overdue from the patient side, it's red. If there's um, waiting for the clinician to review, it's blue, and if everything's up to date and hunky dory, then it's going to have the green frame around it. So that's kind of um, the left side of the screen when you're facing the screen. On the right side, so on the top, of course, is the patient's name, the patient's information, um, the status of where the treatment is holding in terms of the percentage complete of the treatment, and all the details regarding that particular treatment. Now, underneath that is the schedule. Now, the schedule is created automatically when you set up the patient and the treatment, the schedule is created automatically based on those settings. So if you request a scan the day of the liner change, then it will create the schedule automatically for the entire treatment with the scan request and the liner change prompts. And this is a screenshot, obviously, but if you're able to scroll down, you would see week one, week two, week three, you would see the entire schedule. Um, and then right on top of that, we have all scans and messages, so you could refine um, the view to essentially show you just the scans or just the messages coming in from the patient. So you have that filter capability as well. Finally, there's the button add a milestone. So for whatever reason you decide, hey, I want another scan that's not part of the schedule, then you could just click add a milestone and the patient will get a new scan request. And we actually have also the option is if you don't want the entire schedule created for you automatically, and that's an option as well. And then just whenever you want a, a scan, just click add a milestone, scan request, 
and it shoots out a request uh, to the patient. So the whole interface is, is on one hand built to be as simple and straightforward as possible when you're creating the treatment and the scan requests, a lot of that is pre-populated automatically for you with the default settings. On the other hand, if you wanna customize and decide exactly when and the number of scans and the type of requests and update the schedule, all of that functionality is there and built in. So you can either go with the default settings or you could fully customize exactly what you wanna be getting. If it's a photo, if it's a video, when the request should come in, the number of requests, all that stuff is fully customizable. So you have both sides of the coin in terms of using the default settings or fully customizing exactly what you want. Yeah, love it. Um, just gonna move to the next slide here. So this is actually also another new feature. Uh, I am getting close to the end here. Um, comparison, uh, this is kind of really new actually. I feel like this just came out last week almost. Yeah, um, exactly. This is kind of what I was uh, explaining earlier where there's a little, little drag and drop box at the add model files, which is really cool because you can add your stages of models and that'll store it in the monitoring app. So at each scan request, you'll they'll do a scan and it'll actually be able to, like this, pull the scan data in each of those, what it should look like on your plan versus what it actually looks like in the scan. So I think that's really cool. I have not personally used it yet. It's pretty fairly new. But man, that's it's going to be really nice because in the past, you know, I'm basically using uh, pulling up Blue Sky or pulling up, you know, whatever aligner company I'm using on the side here, and I'm got to have all these screens, and it makes it a little trickier. Um, so just having it in the system obviously is going to make the workflow a little bit easier. So that's really cool, and I'm excited to kind of try it out. Um, and then also moving forward here, uh, you know, this is kind of. Um, what I was explaining earlier with kind of the future business model that it's going to be about $29 per patient. Now that's not a monthly thing. That's a per cost or one-time fee. Um, you know, this charge will only happen after the patient uploads the first scan so that we can make sure that there's compliance first before you get charged. So I really, you know, Michael's always been, that's one of the things I love about Blue Skies. Everything's always really reasonable. Um, they, they aren't trying to nickel dime you. And I think it's great. Um, you know, Blue Sky are people switching from Bio Big Box to Blue Sky Monitoring or or the patients are automatically grandfathered in. And if um, they will stay free for that amount of treatment with that patient, and then you also get free five patients of scanning. So, you know, it's a great initial kind of startup. There's no reason not to at least try it. Um, and then after the six pay patient is when the charges. Now, if you're using Lab Pronto, you actually get all this stuff for free. Um, so that's, you know, a great included, this is kind of what I was talking about with the diversifying when places have other, you know, options of revenue, um, they can offer, you know, good deals on things. So I think that's really great. Um, just in closing kind of the future, what it holds, um, you know, some of the things I'd like to see in the messaging, actually, it kind of went away, um, with the messages. I was able to actually put screenshots into my messages. Now I can't do that. Um, so sometimes what I would do, if I see a spot that's not tracking, I would screenshot it, kind of put a red circle around it and say, hey, where are your Chewies here? Um, but even being able to send videos back to patients, um, I think setting up times for messages would be great. So like I'm doing these, I have a seven month old uh, who you probably just heard, um, you know, when he goes to bed is when I have to do my work. And that's usually at nine, 10 o'clock. And I don't want patients to know that they can do, oh yeah, I'll just message them now um you know at nine ten o'clock so you can set up when that message goes out kind of like what android and gmail are kind of implementing and also templates would be nice to have like you know you kind of your routine ones like oh everything looks good you know just be able to click it one time would be great scanning occlusals it's not like 100 percent necessary probably for like treatment but if you were really going to start implementing like initial exams um it'd be nice to be able to see maybe the occlusals so you can maybe get someone, and that's kind of one of my features is not just for aligners doing braces checks, uh, initial exams. I mean, I, I always love having x-rays, but it's nice to be able to just give someone an idea of what they would need and then get them in, you know, and still, you know, let them know it's tentative on x-rays, but um, just to give them an idea of what they might get when they come in. Um, possible smaller scopes, as I brought up earlier. Um, and I think retainer checks would be great. I mean, if you could literally give every single patient a scope at the end of treatment, or if they already have one, tell them keep it. If you start feeling like you have questions or you, you lost a retainer, we can do a quick scan. Hey, you need to come in 
probably need new treatment or we can, hey, we can just make your new retainers off the scan when you got your braces off or your aligners were done and there's no office visit needed. You just pay through you know, the credit card terminals and um, it's like a, a contactless, you know, people like that. They, they, they strive for that, it's uh, convenience and they're willing to pay for that. Um, so I think, you know, the future is bright. Um, thank you guys for having me. I know I talked a lot. I'm sorry I talked your guys a year off, but if you guys have any questions, this is uh, Stoic on the left. We call him Stowe Hefner. That's him in his Valentine's robe and his glasses. Uh, little Oliver's in the middle. That's my seven month old son. And, uh, and then you have Sven on the right. He's just kind of crazy. And then Stoic again on the right. He loves his glasses. So thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm I'm ready to answer them. Yeah, so there are a few questions. Um, number one, how does the patient how do the patients usually react when you tell them about the remote monitoring and explain to them the system? Do they see that as something interesting and exciting, or how does the patient usually respond? It's a great question. It's really mixed. I have some who are like, oh my gosh, I love it. I have I just started a liner patient, um, engineer, you know, loves all the tech. Like he's just like so infatuated with it. And we did a scan and he's like, I love this. And I have some patients who drive, you know, an hour to come see me. I've, I've had a person fly from Colorado a few times for visits because they started here and they didn't want to transfer. Um, so something like this is great for those kind of people who just don't have the time to drive in all the time. So those people really appreciate it. And then you have the local people sometimes who are like, eh, whatever, I'll just, you know, I just want to come in. I don't care. So it's really one of those things you have to really ask them and you have that that's one of the nice things about being a smaller office is that um you know you can get to know these people how they feel about this stuff if you're just a really big office you kind of lose sight of that um and then you just apply your cookie cutter way to everyone and not everyone is the same so um that i kind of that's kind of what i initially talked about with like the pricing stuff for michael is that's one of the reasons that i love blue sky is everything is kind of you pay for what you get, you pay for what you use. It's not a subscription that you're going to like smoke me on if I don't use it. Um, so I, that's, you know, kind of why I like that mentality, that business model. It follows my business model. You know, I was talking about brand awareness and I think, you know, building your brand about who you are, patients love that and you grow organically. You, you don't have to do all this marketing. And sometimes I like being kind of the small, if I get a day off, I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, I'm gonna go home and hang out with my son or, um, you know, go do something. Um, so I'm not like lazy by any means, but like, I, I like to utilize these things to help out. And uh, I think it's great for you. So just to clarify, currently the system is free and around three months or so, we're going to start charging. And as Scott mentioned, that's going to be $29 one-time fee for the patient. And it's only going to be when they send in their first scan. So it's an indication of a certain level of compliance. And once we Know that the patient is is has the compliance, then we'll charge the one dollar the twenty nine dollar one time fee. And as mentioned earlier as well, if the case is a lab pronto aligner case, meaning that the the aligners are ordered via lab pronto, then there's an option to get the free scope, and the patient will be grandfathered into monitoring as well at no additional charge. And any patients that you start before the um, next three or four months will also be able to be continued at no charge. And a final point is even once we start charging, the first five patients will be included at no charge. So you could get familiar with the system, patients get, get familiar with the system, integrate into your clinical workflow, and all of that will be without any additional costs. Um, another question is regarding compliance. Do you see that the monitoring functionality increases a line of compliance or, or not? You know, that's a great question. I, I probably don't have the answer yet. I'm still probably figuring that out. I feel like compliance, man, it's a really, that's a really tough game because it's so patient dependent that they really just, you know, maybe it will. But like I said, I think they almost get embarrassed. So they don't want to send scans. So I, I would, I would assume like dental monitoring, all these companies are like, oh yeah, you're going to get better compliance. I think you're just going to find out that they don't have compliance sooner. So for example, I have a patient who did a scope. They're just like kind of over the whole liner thing. And now we're switching to braces, but because we do this and we kind of, I don't want to say annoy them, but like you're kind of on them a little more. 
they they kind of you know hey this really isn't working for me it's not that half-hearted let's keep going kind of mentality it's they kind of make decisions like all right this isn't working for me um you know it, it's kind of you can tell that you know we as an office are like hey like come on we got to do this like if you want to make it to the end this is how it goes so I don't know if it really boosts compliance, but I, like I said, it just really, it kind of nips it in the butt early because I just don't want to be treating people for five years and just daily dallying around with this, especially, you know, this is a huge thing. If you're doing in-house aligners, you really don't want to get stuck with this case for five years because you, you're going to be losing your mind and losing your butt financially on it. Um, yeah, it's great. You know, we send out to Invisalign, but at the same time, it's, you know, these are kind of the ways I think it's going to go in the future. There's no way any lab long term are going to be doing, you know, free unlimited for five years long term. I just don't see it being the way it goes. So, you know, at some point this is going to creep up on keeping an eye on compliance. So I don't think you'll ever know that answer, though. OK, is the side by side comparison limited to blue sky plan treatment plans? I believe it's not. I think it's any STL file you can throw in there. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so that is correct. As long as you have the STL file. Uh, so like if, you know, you got it exported from another company, you just throw it in there and it's going to work. Okay, very good. So I'm going to um, just wrap things up. We're going to be sending out uh, CE credits for attendees. They should arrive to your email probably within a week or so. Um, the, as I mentioned at the beginning, the presentation is being recorded, so we should have it on YouTube and our social channels in the next couple of days. Please check out our schedule for upcoming webinar presentations. That's blueskybio.university forward slash webinars. Um, Scott, if people want to learn more or contact you or further yeah. education opportunities, is yeah, there I best mean, I'm, way on, to reach I'm out? on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Um, I think it's my call name is smiles by Kanas. Um, you can also email me. I, uh, my kind of my professional email is Scott Kanas D D S at gmail.com. Super easy. Okay. Very good. We also have uh, videos on blue sky bio university, and we actually have individual profiles for educators with their educational content available on blue sky bio.university as well. So any information regarding upcoming courses, uh, training sessions, webinars, all the information, all the educational information is being centralized at blueskybio.university. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to attend. We hope to see you at future webinar presentations. And Scott, thank you so much for your constant That's feedback it. and involvement for today's webinar presentation. And uh, we're definitely going to you know, keep working on your additional comments. And uh, we'll continue improving the system as we do for all our Blue Sky Bio products. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. Scott, thank you so much.